Okay, so welcome back to another video. In today's video, we have a partial sum with our starting index at k is equal to 1 up to 10 to the power m minus 1 of the floor of log base 10 of k. So this is interesting since um, this is the first time I've ever covered a, a, um, a summation dealing with the floor function. And obviously we know how floor functions operate. They are known as the greatest integer function. So for any real number of your choice, um, anything larger than that integer of the real number, it's going to equal to that integer. It's just the same thing as like ceiling functions as well, but except they, you know, it's the opposite. It deals with, you know, the least. When you expand this out, it actually forms a really nice, interesting closed form. And of course we want to basically solve for closed form since it's just we have our um, choice of M that we want to choose. We want to find um, like a general formula for evaluating the sum. So you're going to see how um, the log, the floor of the logarithm function at base 10 operates in a way when we expand the series out. And um, it's actually pretty surprising to see. So let's just jump right in. So obviously we know that for um, saves for some real number u, I'm just going to state the definition of a floor function. We know that it's in between the compound inequality of n less than or equal to u strictly less than n plus 1 for um, for some integer n. And um, here, if we want to rewrite the definition, um, well, rewrite our floor function of the log using the floor function definition, so we can say that, we'll call this, uh, for example, I'll just say n equals the floor of log base 10 of k. Then applying that definition, so obviously you see that this is um, n is less than or equal to the log base 10 of k, strictly less than n plus 1. Now, if we were to solve for the inequality such that the center of, for such that the middle of our compound inequality is just the variable itself, obviously you could just take the base 10 of both sides of the inequality, and so you get that k falls in between, so 10 to the power n is less than or equal to k, strictly less than um, 10 to the power n plus 1. So we'll use that for our um, little replacement. So now, going back to our, our given, so I'll just rewrite that same, inf our partial sum. Let me fix this for a sec. So here, um, 10 m minus one, then k is equal to one of our floor log 10 k. How do we do this? Well, basically, we can just replace everything with our index for k with, you know, the whole definition of our um, inequality, our compound inequality. What I can do is, so starting off with our first sum, so we replace k equals 1. Really, k is equal to 1 is the same thing as writing as in the base 10 to the power 0. So if we follow by this notion, so if I have 10 to the power 0 over here, then 0 plus 1, then that would mean... Um, the, our upper index really it's because it's not inclusive for 10 to the power n plus 1 but since we follow with the upper index we can just say that instead it's 10 to the 1 for um, m is equal to 1 remember m can be bigger than n we can justify that as well um, so I'll just replace that with 10 to the m or in other words that's like 10 to the power 1 and then subtract 1 so 10 to the power 1 subtract 1 of our log base 10 k then if we just keep going and expanding the series, so let's see, let me write out the second term. So k is equal to 10 to the one. This is just follows with the next, um, the next term. So we're splitting this up into um, a sum of summations. So now we just um, apply the same thing, just will be different than the last. So this will be 10 to the squ 10 squared subtract one, log uh, 10k. Then I'm just gonna write this in the next line, so plus, now let's do one for three, or excuse me, um, k is equal to 10, 10 squared. So then this will be 10 cubed subtract one of log 10 k. Okay, so we keep going. So now let's actually evaluate this at the nth term. So here, so this will be 10 to the, um, well the upper, the upper bound for this will be 10 plus, um, 10 to the power n plus one subtract one then the index starting from there would be k is equal to 10 to the power n of the same log 10k. We keep going, so on and so forth. But since the upper index is 10 to the power n minus 1, so because I said that n can be smaller than m, 
So, or K in the other sense, I'm getting it mixed up. But that would be have to be our last term. So in other words, we can write that uh, over here so as 10 to the M subtract one. So now that starting index for specifically this sum would have to be 10 to the power um, M subtract one. And then with the log 10 K. So now we can actually rewrite this a little better. Um, what, can I, what, what do I mean when I say this? Okay, so let me start off, let me, let me start by saying, um, or rather underline the extreme left hand side and then rewrite this as our new expanded series of, I just dropped my marker. We just expanded this with a sum of summations using the definition with the floor function. So this is our new rewritten summations. It's a sum of sums. Now next, what we can do is we can actually evaluate what the series is um, summing. What you'll notice is k is equal to 10 to the zero. We're starting the first, we're just starting for the first sum, for example, and then you'll notice the pattern for each of these sums as well with the indexes. So 10 to the power zero, that starts at one, k is equal to one. Then 10, mi 10 to the power one minus, or 10 to the power one minus one, that's nine. So any of these you plug in, so if you take the floor of that, it's actually just going to equal zero since everything has become with less than one and we use the definition of our floor function over here. So this will become zero. I'll, re I'll write everything what we need to do in a sec, but just to give a little like reiteration of what's, what's happening. So now the next is 10 to the power of one, then 10 squared subtract one. So this goes from 10 and then, um, what is it? 100 minus one, so 99. So starting from k is equal to 10 to 99. Uh, any of the numbers for k you plug in over there, it's actually going to be the f um, taking the floor of that, so that's actually going to equal 1. Do the same thing here for square, um, 100 to, what is it, 999, everything you plug in there is 2. You keep going so on and so forth, everything here is actually going to be n. And then for over here, do the same thing, everything will actually, all the terms will fall under um, n minus 1. So in other words, no matter what you put in for k is equal to, um, whatever your starting index and all the way up to the upper bound, it's always just gonna be the floor of that, which this will always be zero. This will always be one, two, three, four, all the way so on and so forth. This will go to N, keep going, and then all the way up to your final sum, this will fall under M minus one. So now really, we can actually rewrite this, same thing, so 10 um, here. So let me write let me write the expanded series, um, rephrase, and what well, we written, and then I'll come back with more explanations. Okay, so here I just, rewrite everything that we just explained on how the log um, log the floor of log 10k operates within each of the index you go up to so everything here will be zero then one then two keep going all the way up to n and then m minus one okay good so now from here that we can actually now expand that series even further so let me um, I just stuck a little room here so I'll put this right here so if we start from zero so this is 10 to the zero so from one all the way up to nine nine times zero so zero add up um, zero nine times but that'll just be zero so we could just disregard that so you go from 10 then to 99 so that means you're evaluating for one one plus one you do this for 99 times but simply we can actually write a little um, we can simplify it a little better. So I can actually factor out one, then take its difference from the indexes below. So 10 square, subtract one, then subtract 10. But since if you do that math, um, 10 square minus one, or I mean, um, what is it? 10 square, yeah, 100 minus 10, and then minus one, 89. However, you're actually evaluating this 90 times since you're starting from k is equal to 10. It just picks up from where you left off from the previous summation from um, 10 to, what is it or yeah 10 to 99 so you're doing this 90 times so that means i could just add a one so that'll give us you know 90 terms to evaluate for one then you do the same thing here however it's it's from um 100 then 10 cubed so 999 it's just the same thing do this 900 times you see the pattern the way you do this it's just like you're adding each digits of zero to the nine so if i were to do this for three then that would be nine thousand times and then you know um, 90,000 times you with four and then five it just keep going so far you'll you understand how the pattern um, operates from there so if I uh, just do this so factor out the two then 10 cube subtract one uh, subtract 10 then add a one okay then we just keep going then we just go up to the nth term so then now we have um, n times 10 to the power n plus 1 subtract 1 subtract 10 to the n 
then add one. And then lastly, um, we just do this for M minus one. So M minus one, M minus one, then um, 10 to the power M, subtract one, subtract 10 to the M minus one, then add one. That's our little expansion over here. Okay, so we have our little expansion over here, but here's also a little thing you should note. So you'll notice that um, we have that, well, specifically we're looking for, um, actually for the nth term. So you notice that 10, then n plus one, minus one, minus 10 n plus one. So the ones will cancel, so you're just left with the difference of 10 n plus one and then 10 n. But you'll notice that this is just the nth term. You notice if you just plug in um, one to each, that actually follows a little close form that we can um, summarize a little better, then that way we can actually write this as a new, we can write what's underlined in blue as a new sum. So the new sum being, so um, let's see, n is equal to one, then the upper index would have to be n subtract one of our, um, so n, and then multiply with 10 n plus one subtract uh, 10 n. Now just do a little bit of algebra. I can actually simplify a little, little more. So what I can do is I'll actually just distribute the n into our parentheses for the expression. And then I'll take using linearity. So basically I'm taking a difference of two sums. So n is equal to one, n minus one. Um, then n 10 to the n plus one subtract with the same indexes again, equals one, n minus one of, um, what is it? n to the power 10 to the power or n times 10 to the power n now next over here i can actually simplify again even further specifically this term right here i can actually re-index we're just going to keep this the same the way it is because later um, some terms will cancel out which it's very nice very satisfying to look at we're going to do a little bit of a re-indexing here so now this time we'll start with our um, new bounds at n is equal to 2 and then our new upper bound would be m of n subtract one multiplied by uh, 10 to the power n. So this just you can see like how the readjusting can, looks here. Subtract with the um, sum over here, m subtract one, and then n equals one of n to the power 10 n. Okay, so um, next what I can do is just apply linearity, just do the same thing for this same method over here. So now we have the um, new sum, so m n equals 2 of what is it n to the power 2 n then subtract the sum m n is equal to 2 again of what is it 10 to the power n and then back here so subtract m subtract 1 of n is equal 1 of n to the power 2 n we can actually, now the next step is we can actually readjust this index a little bit better. So next, yeah, actually what I'm going to do is we're going to change the upper index to m is equal to one, but however, n equals two for the starting index that will um, preserve the way it is. You'll see, you'll see what happens is actually pretty um, interesting. n is equal to of n then 10 to the power n. So even though this is n minus n, we just decrease by one. That means we have to evaluate for what, um, for what um, this summation is equal to, but that's not that difficult to do. So you just basically just plug in m back here and then just add it back to the sum over here. So just m and then 10 to the power m, subtract, same thing before, m, n is equal to, and then two to the power n. I can actually re readjust this index as well because there's m minus one and then n is equal to one. Let me put that back as two. So the starting index would be n is equal to two, but that also has to imply that I have to evaluate this at n is equal to one to preserve this summation uh, for this inequality, for the summation equality. Um, n minus one, n is equal to, then n to n, then we just subtract this with, so plug in one, so it's one times 10 to the power, so it's just 10, okay. You'll notice this that we actually have some terms that cancel each other out, specifically this term right here, and then this term right here. So now all we have left is we just have m, then 10 to the m, subtract 10, and then subtract with our sum, m, then n is equal to 10 to the power k, or 10 to the power n, excuse me. And what you'll notice is that, um, Here's the thing with this, 
uh, we're gonna readjust the index. So k is equal to zero. And so what that implies is that m, so m would have to decrease to m subtract two. And you're gonna see something interesting. So how about this? Let me, let me show you like what, what's happening over here, what I can do that allows us to do this. I'm just gonna erase it later. Just, this is just a demonstration. So what you see is that I have um, 10 to the power n, n is equal to two to m. So if I expand this out, we have 10 square plus um, 10 q plus 10 four, all the way up to 10 to the m, okay? Now what I can do is I can factor out a 10 square, then that will be 10 zero plus, um, what is it, 10 to the one plus 10 square, all the way up to 10 to the m, and then subtract two, but I can actually just rewrite this, whatever expressions in the parentheses as a um, new sum. So this will be 10 square multiplied by um, the upper bound n minus two, then k is equal to zero of 10 to the power um, k. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So let me actually put this so, and then, the ne and then when I do that, then the next step actually becomes very interesting. So m, 10 m, subtract 10, then um, what is it? Subtract 10 square, multiply with the um, partial sum m subtract two, n is equal zero of 10 to the power um, n. Okay, so I have this, so I gotta make some room over here. And what you'll notice is that this actually forms a, um, a, par a, a geometric series at the n minus two term. So you don't need to worry about the whole like absolute value is less than one inequality. That's only if, if you're taking the infinite sum of that geometric series, but this is just a partial sum, so we don't need to worry too much about that. Okay, so now I'm, we're basically just almost done. So it's m, 10 to the m, um, subtract 10, and then subtract using that rule. So um, hold on, 10 squared, then it would be um, the whole like one minus r to the power n plus one and then divide by one minus r. But what I can do is I'll just multiply it by negative one and I'll interchange the terms from both the numerator and the denominator. And we see that this is, um, we could say that as 10 to the m subtract one, subtract one and divided by 10 um, minus nine. Okay, then if we just keep going further, so m, 10 m, subtract 10, you can actually, I'm actually gonna skip this because um, this, the, 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 la the last thing to do is just actually perform a little bit of algebra, but that's actually not that difficult to show. And I'll let, let you guys do that yourself just to um, use the algebra to simplify this out to get the final answer. But once you do that, you should get that the following final answer, or in this case, the closed form of our given uh, sum is supposed to be t m times 10 to the power m subtract um, 10 divided by 9 then multiply with 10 to the power m subtract 1 like so and there we have it this is actually um, not the answer I was expecting but it's um, pretty pretty neat how um, the floor function operates then we can actually expand the series out come to the conclusion that we can actually rewrite it even more readjusting the index apply the geometric series at that um n minus two term use the algebra um leave that as an exercise as i just mentioned to get the final answer or the closed form of our given like so so yeah that's a uh, pretty cool if you ask me